Hey you, yeah you, One-Eyed Pete and I are going for a ride. Hop on in. Hello everybody and to my nine wonderful followers. Today I am going to do a full overview of my rooftop tent, which I have the Roof Nest Sparrow, on my 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. I've had it since September. I've done a handful of trips in it. I've had no problems and I've learned some things about my car that I absolutely love. I wanted to show you these today and maybe this will help you determine what setup you need for your future rooftop tent. Alrighty, so I'm pretty sure these are the core bars. You can see that they're shaped um, with this tapering at the end and a thicker front, so they're aerodynamic. I don't have any noise. I believe they're the core bar 60 inch, although I'm not totally sure because I got these from a garage sale at REI. So I think I got them for like $40, which they're usually around 165 or 170. Um, Cass loves a good deal. I like to call myself thrifty and shifty. So this was a great deal. Um, these are the Skyline Towers. Um, this is separate from the landing pad. So I have a built-in flush tr uh, track that was built into my Jeep. So I needed a mounting pad and then additionally I needed a Skyline Tower. So it does create some height which I'm not totally fond of. Um, but you know what, whatever. If I have to find the good in this, um, that extra air and then the roof nest really insulates my car so my car does not get as hot as it used to. It's honestly really nice. Sometimes I'll come back to it and I'll open the back and it feels like the air conditioning's on. Juno, my dog, loves that. It's been, I guess, pretty great so I can't complain. So yes, I have the 60 inch Yakima core bars. I have the Skyline Tower and the landing pads. I believe if you bought everything new, which would probably be difficult because they're sold out, <laughs> I think, um, I think it would be over $400. It's pretty pricey. Um, I got the landing pads on a discount. I got these Skyline Towers not at a discount. Um, that really made me sad because I love a good deal. And then, like I said, these were the steal of the year. I love these and they were cheap so that makes me very very happy the only complaint I have which is an easy fix but my lazy butt hasn't gotten to it is I don't have a cap on them and they're gonna rust on the inside I actually bought a whole nother pack to cap them but they fell off or someone stole them so I need to get some double-sided tape and just get those back on there so there's no rust on the inside I don't want to ruin the integrity of the bars um, one of the things about crossbars that not everyone may know is that there's a static weight rating and then there's a moving weight rating and I'm gonna basically voice over the next few seconds once I do the research and how to accurately explain this um, so you can do your research and find the best setup for your car. Um, it, it totally depends, but since it's a tent, it's your uh, bars basically only have to support the weight of the tent empty when it's moving. Um, bars can support a lot more weight at a static position when it's not moving. So usually like you can put probably 500 pounds in this when the car isn't moving or probably 400 rated, but literally, you could probably put 500 because they always underrate them. But moving, it can only support probably 200 pounds. So I'm gonna voice over and put that in here and probably a, um, some literature on what crossbars you need for. Anyone that has a Jeep Grand Cherokee knows that the tailgate opens and it goes pretty far back. So you actually have to mount the tent quite a bit forward. When you're going high speeds, um, this makes the tent flop and that is very unsafe. It adds a lot of unnecessary stress on the front bar, especially the 
the lift stress and pressure on it. So um, in my first video, I showed how I use these six inch seersucker mounts with a fabricated steel bar connected to the track underneath the rooftop tent, which is the roof nest sparrow. Um, these each withstand a load of 220 pounds. And let me tell you, this has been the most amazing incognito fix I could have ever dreamt of. Um, occasionally I have to pump them up, but these have been superstars and I get so many compliments on them or people don't even notice them. It's either like, wow, that's such a great idea or Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice that those weren't built into the car. So I love these. This is the best, best fix I ever could have imagined. For anyone wondering what I'm using for my crossbars, these are Yakima crossbars. Like I said, I am thrifty and shifty. I love a good deal. I'm not really shifty, but I just like those two words together, but I love a good deal. When it comes to buying and choosing which type of crossbar setup you want, in my opinion, I think you should never skimp out. I was presented with the cheap Amazon crossbars that I think are between $150 and $200, maybe even less. I wanted to step it up and get a known name brand crossbar and tower. I, it's just not something I wanted to risk with such a high price object on top. And also it's a safety issue. Um, you're not only concerned about the weight pressing down on the crossbar, but more so the pull of it up. When you're driving on the freeway, there is a substantial amount of pull and that is the biggest concern you should have um, in motion pressure load and weight load is the, I think the biggest determinant of what crossbars you should get. Um, any name brand will, I will, I, I would assume any name brand set up for crossbars and towers will provide a substantial static and in motion weight rating. I mean, even though I got a great deal on two of the three pieces, um, I wouldn't skimp on the crossbar and towering setup you get. I hope this answers your questions. Um, there's so many different ways to do this, like Thule and Yakima, you can put in your car model and then they'll show you what you need. From there, you can go to eBay, I'm sure Nextdoor and Amazon and um, Craigslist will have options too that might cut the cost down a little bit. It is expensive, but again, it's what your roof nest or rooftop tent is connected to. And that is so important, like I said, for you and the people driving behind you. Right now, my car's mode is in the entry level air suspension. So my car is actually lower than what it usually drives at. This is one of the things I have absolutely loved. And when I say love, I mean, love. <laughs> I love this so much. Um, as many of you know, there are four different levels of air suspension, one for super off-roading, moderate off-roading, normal driving. There's actually an aero mode, which lowers the front end when you're going over, I believe, 55 miles an hour, something in that range. And then there's an entry level mode. So there's actually five levels, I suppose. And with the rooftop tent being so high off the ground and getting my dog up there and putting it away, sometimes with unlevel ground, this is the most amazing feature ever, ever, hands down. There's also something else about it. I'm not totally sure if this is accurate. So in the comments, let me know but I'm pretty sure that the car levels itself once it's been parked for a while with the air suspension because I've been on super uneven terrain and my roof tent always seems to be level and then my car occasionally will adjust itself, which I might get on video shortly, but I'm pretty sure it levels itself, which is iconic. I can't even begin 
to explain how amazing that is. So that's something about um, the 2018 Trailhawk. Um, I'm not sure if it's an added feature or what, but the air suspension is primo. 10 out of 10, recommend, love it. Wherever your car or legs take you, I wish you happy, healthy, and safe travels. There are so many great things awaiting all of us. I hope they're coming very soon, but despite all the craziness and darkness in the world, there is always good to be found. So, Cass is out. Love, peace, happiness. Goodbye. Oh, Juno! Come here. Do you have anything to say? Do you want to say goodbye? Can you speak? Love, peace, happiness. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh.